Top 11 Werewolf Movies of the 80s and 90s Explored When it comes to supernatural creatures, there is no limit of cinematic classics that horror fans can easily have access to. Speaking of mystical creatures, werewolf flicks have always been exceptionally popular, and while there is no denying that the genre is seriously underrated, you will agree with us when we tell you that there has been this undeniably long, torrid affair between movies and the mysticism of lycanthropy. Believe it or not, werewolf movies did steal the show, especially back in the 80s. Well, this brings us to the main content of today's video, where we will be focusing on the top 11 werewolf movies of the 80s and the 90s. Are you ready? Let's take a good look at these monstrous mutts, shall we? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. <laughs> The Howling, undoubtedly one of the best werewolf movies to have ever been made, Joe Dante's The Howling was inspired by Gary Brandner's 1977 horror novel, also titled the same. The plotline of the movie revolves around Karen, a popular TV anchorwoman who is sent to a secluded resort in the countryside as part of therapy after a rather bizarre and near-deadly encounter with a serial killer leaves her amnesiac and emotionally disturbed. While the peaceful forest retreat turns out to be quite scenic, it does not take Karen long to figure out that the residents are not what they seem to be, and she soon ends up making the appalling discovery. The terrifying presence of the fiercely rapacious creatures of the night or werewolves to be more precise, in the supposedly safe haven. With the movie celebrating its 42nd anniversary this year in March, there is no denying that the year 1981 was undoubtedly the best year in the overall history of werewolf cinema. The Howling's iconic transformation scenes were deliberately made lengthy, ghastly, and add to these quite painful to look at. The special effects of the movie were categorically top-notch, making the flick quite the brisk chiller back in the 80s. The sharp and witty screenplay by the duo of John Sayles and Terence H. Winkless certainly deserves mention, along with John Hora's work of stylized cinematography and Pino DiNaggio's effectively ominous background score. As for Dante, he kept his focus primarily on crowd-pleasing thrills, and the rest, as you all know, is history. The film is an absolute masterpiece of primal terror, and in case you have not watched this cult classic werewolf flick yet, we highly recommend that you please do so at your earliest. <laughs> An American Werewolf in London We assure you that only a few filmmakers out there are truly capable of putting together the element of dark humor with horror in a manner John Landis does. Landis' 1981 comedy horror flick, which is still regarded as the best werewolf movie of all time, follows two American backpackers from New York City, David and Jack, trekking across the Yorkshire moors of northern England. The duo gets attacked by a werewolf, which leads to the brutal death of Jack and David getting bitten and infected with the wolf's curse. Things are taken up a notch higher when David starts getting tormented by the undead Jack, who tells him that he has until the next full moon to transform into a werewolf. Now it is up to David to come to terms with the monster that he is about to become and contemplate his next step. While it is only too fitting to address an American werewolf in London as a smart werewolf movie, of course, we will be citing our reasons. To begin with, the film knows the subgenre that is dealing with Inside Out, and it goes without saying that the flick has made use of the genre's legacy to its fullest advantage. One of the key moments of the movie firmly happens to be the infamous transformation scene of the protagonist, one that does look incredibly painful if you ask us. Mind you, the film takes its own time, the scenes are created quite gradually and organically, and when the particular sequence does arrive, it lives up to its high expectations. After all, the movie did earn special makeup effects, creator and actor Rick Baker, an Academy Award for Best Makeup. This hilarious yet horrifying iconic werewolf movie became an instant critical and commercial success, and if you ask us, it can surely be watched again and again with a tub of popcorn and your favorite soda. Wolf. Michael Wadley's crime horror flick is based on Louise Whiteley Strieber's debut novel, also titled The Wolfen. Now, if we are being honest here, those who have seen Wolfen will agree with us when we tell you that the movie is quite different from the usual werewolf genre flicks, because this one here does not really have any werewolves in it. The setting is New York City, and the storyline has this famous tycoon getting savagely murdered along with his wife and bodyguard. 
This very incident has Sydney cop Dewey Wilson investigating the case, along with a series of other ravaging murders. Now with no suspects or motives, and each murder taking a more brutal turn, Dewey eventually unearths an indigenous legend about wolf spirits. Boasting a tout screenplay by Wadley and David M. Ayer Jr., the movie is hands down intriguing. Wolfen deliberately takes a different pathway by building up a rather unique connection with Native American mysticism. The movie happens to be the first flick to actually make use of thermographic images with the sole purpose of representing the point of view of a character. This is bound to give you some major Predator movie vibes, and for that, we have cinematographer Gary Fisher to thank for. It is a great thriller, has a solid cast, and please know that the high point of the movie isn't the gore that's on display, but how the story is presented to the audience. A must-see for werewolf fans, but we recommend that you give this movie a shot with an open mind, because for those of you expecting a real werewolf movie here, please know that you are in for a total surprise. Silver Bullet First things first, when you have a movie that's written by Stephen King, you know you are in for a treat. We are specifically talking about Dan Atias's 1985 horror thriller flick, which is inspired from King's 1983 short horror novel, Cycle of the Werewolf. The movie that's considered a cult classic today has on display the quaint little rural town of Tarker's Mills, which suddenly gets plagued by a series of unexplained gruesome murders. Naturally, this has the residents teaming up and attempting to hunt down the killer, but most of them end up meeting similar gruesome fates. But when the paraplegic young boy, Marty Coleslaw, narrowly escapes death at the hands of a werewolf that he bumps into, he starts putting the pieces together only to discover a horrific truth about the mysterious identity of the creature. To address Atias's silver bullet as an understated werewolf movie would be an understatement because it happens to be an underrated movie on the whole. You have some genuinely frightening sequences, we are stressing on the gory deaths, then there's some great acting and writing, add to these the occasional touches of the element of humor and an entertaining pace as well. But despite all of these, the movie did not fare well at the box office. While Silver Bullet did rightfully earn its place as a cult classic later, we will dig deeper into why it did so. There's this human drama to begin with, one that genuinely worked out in favor of the movie. Next there's the shocking church dream sequence, which we are pretty sure none of you saw it coming. Also, where else will you get to see a werewolf literally getting its eye blown out with a firework? We know we haven't seen such a thing anywhere for sure. Having said all that, special mention to Armando Nanuzzi for his brilliant work of cinematography in the movie and Jay Chataway for his incredible musical score. Call yourself a true fan of werewolf movies and Stephen King, and still haven't had the time to see this edge of your seat thriller? You know what you have to do now! Teen Wolf Rod Daniels' coming-of-age comical movie features a 17-year-old awkward high school student, Scott Howard, who is simply tired of being average. His ordinary life takes a sudden 180-degree turn when he realizes that he is a werewolf just like his father. While initially, Scott tries to keep the whole thing a secret, it comes out during a basketball game, and his life gets completely turned around. For starters, he isn't on the sideline of his high school life anymore. He has become an overnight sensation, and add to this, the prettiest girl in his school even has her eyes on him now. Well, if you're looking for something cheesy, but at its finest, you're heading in the right direction. It's a sheer delight to watch the charismatic Michael J. Fox portray the titular character on screen. After all, he is so full of energy. Special mention to screenwriters Jeff Loeb and Matthew Wiseman for penning down a world, one where every person is amusingly okay with the whole idea of a high school student transforming into a werewolf right in the middle of a basketball match. No wonder the movie, despite receiving mixed reviews, became a commercial hit, and even went to the extent of producing an animated TV series, also known as Teen Wolf in 1986, along with a sequel titled Teen Wolf 2 in 1987. That's not where things ended. The movie further went on to produce another supernatural teen drama TV series, also known as Teen Wolf, which aired on MTV from 2011 to 2017. Undoubtedly one of the best funny and most outlandish teen comedies, this one surely deserves a watch. The Company of Wolves. What we have here is one of the best werewolf movies from the celebrated Irish filmmaker Neil Jordan. The Company of Wolves is a British gothic fantasy horror flick, the events of which happen to take place within a dream, and if we are to be more specific about it, it's like a dream within a dream. 
Boasting a runtime of 95 minutes, this dark fairy tale here has a young girl falling asleep while reading a magazine, only to have a series of dreams, which goes without saying, make up the bulk of the movie. There are several narratives all tied together, given that the girl dreams of living in a fairy tale forest during the 18th century. Each story is connected in such a manner that the fantasy world on display is bound to stay with you for a long, long time. Adapted from Angela Carter's short story, also titled the same and co-written by Carter and Jordan himself, it is only fitting to address this movie here as both magnificent and at the same time a bit complex. What is magnificent about the film is a spectacular atmospheric setting and the strong combination of folklore and screen horror. What is complex is the storyline, and if we are being honest here, it is simply because the plotline has these layers. It is almost like peeling an onion, and to top things, everything is a dream at the end of the day. The movie is absolutely surreal, featuring occasional sexual symbolism, copious amounts of gory, visceral horror moments, and of course, poetic beauty. The visual design has been an integral part of the flick throughout, and Brian Loftus has done a fabulous job in terms of cinematography. We highly recommend that you give this mini masterpiece on werewolves a definite shot, because you have to see it to believe it. Wolf. Mike Nichols' romantic horror movie has actor Jack Nicholson essaying the role of Will Randall, a middle-aged publisher who already has enough on his plate. He loses his position at the publishing house to his protege, then discovers that his wife is having an affair, and to top things further, he also gets bitten by a black wolf. What follows next is Will undergoing some major changes. He finds himself extremely charged up, his senses are enhanced, and for some weird reason, he finds himself exceptionally competitive, now more than ever. Determined to fight for his job, Will goes to extreme lengths and also finds himself attracted towards his boss's headstrong daughter in the process. Boasting a clever script by Jim Harrison and Wesley Strick, the movie has on board quite the list of Hollywood heavyweights. When you have Christopher Plummer and James Spader as the effective villains and Nicholson playing a werewolf, you know it is a solid cast. Looking at Nicholson, there's no denying that he is indeed at his campy best. The flick is a perfect blend of realism, satire, and horror. Giuseppe Rotuno deserves a special mention for cinematography. There are some brilliant visuals throughout the film, with a rather memorable and gripping opening sequence. When it comes to the creature designs, they are subtle but, mind you, also very effective, and we have Rick Baker to thank for that. Wolf happens to be a rather offbeat and exciting reimagining of an old wolfy tale which, if you ask us, surely deserves a watch. Bad Moon. Based on Wayne Smith's novel titled Thor, Eric Red's Canadian-American horror movie revolves around Ted, a photojournalist who gets bitten by a werewolf during one of his work expeditions. With him seeking a cure as well as isolation, he comes back home to his trailer. Eventually, he gets a visit from his sister and nephew, and upon figuring out that something is not right with her brother, the sister asks him to live with them. Of course, Ted refuses at first, but eventually accepts his sister's invitation. By now, Ted has already become a werewolf, and with him attempting to reverse his condition or, in simpler words, find a cure for his disease, he becomes hostile towards his family. While the sister is unable to figure out what it is that's bothering Ted, the family dog Thor knows the grave danger that the family is in, and goes to extreme lengths to protect the family. Addressing every horror movie enthusiast out there, believe us when we tell you that Bad Moon happens to be a severely underrated werewolf movie. There is a gracious amount of graphical violence on display, and the gore alone is bound to keep fans of the genre highly contended. Just imagine a camp full of people who are being torn limb from limb literally. There, you have a fair idea. Moving on, you have a plot that is standard, and it is actually pretty cool to witness Ted morph into a werewolf. Now, some of you might address the creature effects as old-fashioned, but it does a pretty decent job of entertaining you. Hands down is the creepiest looking werewolf on display, one that looks both menacing as well as physically imposing. The movie is bound to have you at the edge of your seat right from the opening scene, and when it comes to the final showdown, it's nothing short of a blood feast. If you call yourself a true fan of the genre, this flick here is certainly worth your time. A 
An American Werewolf in Paris. Anthony Waller's An American Werewolf in Paris happens to be a direct sequel to John Landis's An American Werewolf in London. Written by the trio of Waller, Tom Stern, and Tim Burns, the storyline has Seraphine, the daughter of David Kessler and nurse Alex Price from the first movie, now residing in Paris. Seraphine's stepfather is literally on the verge of developing a drug so as to help Seraphine suppress her werewolf transformation, but with the drug having the opposite effect, or in other words, a forced immediate transformation, Seraphine, post the testing of the drug on her, ends up brutally injuring her stepfather. A disheartened Seraphine, determined to end her life, jumps off the Eiffel Tower, only to be saved by the young romantic American tourist, Andy McDermott. Of course, Andy figures out that Seraphine's a werewolf, and the rest of the story goes without saying, is a complete roller coaster ride. You will be surprised to know that John Landis was the original choice for directing the sequel, and while the filmmaker did write a sequel, the studio eventually turned it down. Anyway, coming back to Waller's 1997 flick, the storyline introduces a much wider werewolf angle here. There's this whole new idea of French werewolves feasting on Americans, and to top this, there's even a secret society of werewolves on display here. Waller's movie is fast-paced, it's scary, and the special effects featured are good if not great. You are bound to be entertained by the movie as long as you don't look at it as a sequel. Ginger Snaps. We know what you're thinking. The list clearly states that we are exploring werewolf movies, particularly from the 80s and the 90s, but then again, it would be a cardinal sin to not have John Fawcett's supernatural horror movie in our list, as it conclusively happens to be one of the best werewolf flicks to have ever been made. The film primarily revolves around the morbid, death-obsessed Fitzgerald sisters, Bridget and Ginger. From the time the sisters were children, they had made this pact about dying together when they turned 16. However, their plans go terribly awry when Ginger starts menstruating for the first time and gets bitten by a deadly werewolf. Now with Ginger headed towards a nightmarish transformation, Bridget races against the clock to help her sister out. Fawcett's Ginger Snaps, which was shot within a span of just six weeks, not only emerged as a cult classic later, but it also became the fifth highest earning Canadian flick in 2001. The incredibly effective script by Karen Walton has the audience plunged into the melancholic world of the Fitzgerald sisters right from the opening scene. The movie is living proof of the fact that it does not have to rely on special effects to make you feel scared. As a matter of fact, Fawcett simply refrained from using any CGI effects in the movie. In fact, he went ahead with the traditional route of prosthetics and makeup, which obviously showed how dedicated and passionate he was towards his work. Speaking of the werewolf on display, Fawcett actually had a stuntman near a werewolf suit, and full credit to Paul Jones for doing a fabulous job with the design of the wolf. We highly recommend that you do not miss out on this little gem here if you get the chance. <laughs> Project Metal Beast. Alessandro Di Catano's sci-fi horror flick has a group of scientists performing a military experiment so as to create a super soldier. The experiment goes south when the subject is injected with werewolf blood. While the subject is initially shot with three silver bullets aimed at his chest, he is further cryogenically frozen for a period of 20 years. But all hell breaks loose when a team of medical scientists obsessed with the procedure of artificial skin transplantation is given the subject's body to work on, and they end up removing the bullets from his chest. Werewolves are threatening to begin with. Now imagine a werewolf with impenetrable armored skin. There you have a metallic monstrosity right in front of you. Project Metal Beast happens to be a nice spin on the werewolf mythology, and for that, we have the trio of Gaetano, Roger Steinman, and Timothy E. Sabo to give full credit to. One of the high points of the movie has to be John Carl Beekler's creature effects, particularly the menacing Metal Beast on display. Next, there's a good mix of elements of action as well as suspense on display. The stalking sequences deserve a special mention as they build up the tense atmospheric mood. Of course, it isn't a masterpiece, but there's no denying that the flick does offer a gracious amount of gore, monster action, and an ingenious concept. Fans of the genre, we are pretty sure that you can spare 92 minutes from your busy schedule to give this a shot. Marvelous Verdict well, with this, we finally come to the end of our video here. So which is your favorite werewolf movie from the 80s and 90s? Hit us with your thoughts in the comments section, and do let us know in case your favorite movie from the given time period did not make it to our list. 
stay tuned with us, and we promise to come back with more exciting content. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, <laughs> everyone.